कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन इन द न्यूज टू नाइट सो दर्पर प्रेसिडेंट डिसअपॉइंटेड विद अपॉइंटमेंट बुलेटो नो द कॉप्स फ्लैग फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट एंड स्टेट एसेट सिक्योर फ्रॉम द स्टूडियोज ऑफ एफ बी सी सुबह Fiji. FBC News can tonight confirm that a signed letter by the President of the Social Democratic Liberal Party, Ratu Epenisa Dakumbau, is calling on the Speaker of Parliament for fresh motions to be called for the appointment of the Leader of Opposition. This comes just hours after the denial by Sodelpa MP and Opposition Rep Linda Tambuya, who had said FBC News was using a fake letter for the story. This was also picked up by media company Communications Fiji Limited who went with what Tambuya's co- with, went with Tambuya's comments that the letter was fake without doing any checks. This signed letter has wrought to Epinisa raising a number of concerns to the speaker and while it is signed by the president and general secretary opposition MP Linda Tambuya trying to pour water on the issue. I want to confirm that the letter is fake. Um, actually it was not signed by the president as put up by FBC News. You'll notice that there's no signature. Just a few steps away, new party leader William Ngavoka admitting there is a letter. I was uh, I was aware that it was uh, it was being written, right? Um, but where it ended up, uh, I, I don't know today. Rotepinisa says that as the president of Sadelpa, he is unhappy with the manner in which the party MPs disobeyed the instructions of the party with respect to the appointment of the leader for opposition. Ratu Epinisa reiterates that despite the communication of the party, caucus members decided to vote on their preference of opposition leader with 14 voting for Ratu Naingama, disrespecting the party directive to vote for Ngavoka, who eventually only received five votes. He goes on to say that in the course of the discussions, despite clear indication that the party was recommending only one name and that of Ngavoka, and that no voting should thus take place either in caucus or in parliament, the party directive was disregarded. Ratu Epinisa points out that under section 19 of the Sudelpa constitution, it is clearly stipulated the party leader is also the parliamentary leader. He says while the constitution does not mandate that the parliamentary leader be the party leader, the party in its wisdom needs to be able to have semblance and eliminate confusion in the party and to its voters by having conflicting messages from two leaders, especially when the party leader is an existing MP. Ratu Epinisa says the five who voted for Ngavoka were cohesed to go with only one name into parliament chambers and that of Ratu Naingama. Apenisa Wangardovu, FBC News. Social Democratic Liberal Party MP Michele Mbulanauda was made to face his own shadowy past after making unfounded murder allegations against Prime Minister Boreng Mbani Marama earlier this week. The opposition backbencher has since refused to take media questions about the matter and now there are calls from Mbulanauda to apologize to Mbani Marama. Parliament was told this morning that Mbula Nauda was making racist comments in May 2000 calling Indo-Fijian leaders Tevoro or Devil. There's a documentary evidence on this where you are talking about it in front of civic towers. Where you stood up and he said, who's the head of the legislature? Mahendra Choudhury, Kendia, Hindu, Tevoro. Who's the head of the judiciary? Reddy, Kendia, Hindu, Tevoro. Who's the head of the executive? Choudhury, Kendia, Hindu, Tevoro. Nobody, Mr. Speaker, sir. Nobody, Mr. Speaker, sir, is a Tevoro. Nobody is the devil. Two days ago, Mbula Nauda had said that Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama and Attorney General Aya Sayed Kayum need to cast out the devil from within themselves. He has since been avoiding the media. Mr. Mbula Nauda, just, just a comment no, on no, what no you comment. had said. No you, you stated that the Prime Minister... No comment, no comment. You stated that the no Prime Minister is behind the killing... No comment. Defence Minister Inia Seruiratu has called on Bula Nauda to apologise to the Prime Minister. He is hit out at the opposition MP for not backing up his comments outside Parliament. Why bring that issue into Parliament if he does not have concrete evidence about the case, Mr Speaker? Sir? He has two options as a honourable member. You either apologise to the honourable uh, Prime Minister through the honourable Speaker or go outside Face the media. You've been running away from the media with no comments. Do the honorable thing. Face the media, tell them the truth. Otherwise, that's a cowardly act. 
when you hide behind the curtains of parliamentary privilege in this house. Don't bring rubbish into the house. Bulanauda may be refusing to comment outside the house because he knows he does not enjoy parliamentary privileges and could face defamation charges for making serious allegations without evidence. Attorney General A.S. Sayed Kayum today took a swipe at the opposition for claiming that they are turning the COVID-19 crisis into a game to score political points as they continue to mislead Fijians. Opposition MP Niko Nawaikula claimed that the government sold some of its assets. However, Sayed Kayum says this is not true. Kritika Kumar reports. Niko Nawaikula once again made claims in parliament without any proof that the government's income has been declining. This sold uh, the printing industry. They can't sell FEA and they sell it back to individuals. It's been there for years and they, they've been looking for uh, people to buy it. They can't sell it. The Attorney General has set the record straight and highlighted the government still owns 39% of Fiji ports. He said that we've sold our, uh, we've sold our uh, printing press. It's been sold to Fijian Holdings. You're all saying sell it to Fijian Holdings. It's now been sold to Fijian Holdings. You are now questioning that. Said Kayum also rubbished the claims made by the National Federation Party leader, Professor Biman Prasad. I've looked at carefully for anything that could tell me that this Fiji First government has a vision or a plan or any idea about where it is taking our country. Then he attacked our Fijian COVID safe economic recovery framework without any regard for what that framework has actually allowed the Fijian people to achieve through this extremely tough period. Said Kim also highlighted that there is a lot of misinformation regarding the Fiji National Provident Fund. He says so far around $176 million have been paid out, of which government top-up comes to around $79 million. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, Mirisani Buniwanga, has questioned why opposition MPs don't take a bipartisan approach to help address issues related to violence against women. Buniwanga says a number of initiatives have been implemented which are showing positive results. Senya Nimboila reports. Opposition member Salote Ranronro yesterday questioned the work done by the ministry on violence against women. Existing legislations, policies and programs are not achieving the targeted results to control and reduce violence against women and children. We as a nation hope to find answers to these menacing problems because we on this side of the house had engaged in bipartisan approach and moved motions to establish one, commission of inquiry, two, set up a special committee under standing orders 129, but unfortunately they were both defeated. The minister slammed Ron Ron Ro and says she is unaware of the work done by the ministry because she hardly attends the events organized for the women. The national consultations for our first national action plan to prevent violence against women and girls. Something we should all support and be proud about being the only second nation in the world to venture into the consolidation of a whole, whole of nation evidence-based, measurable, inclusive and funded five-year national action plan. <laughs> Only two members of the opposition turned up, Honorable Rote Mumukepa and Honorable Biman Prasad. Uniwanga says violence against women and girls is preventable if we all get involved and make it our business to talk about it. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. The review of the Republic of the Fiji Military Forces Act is underway. Yes. Defense Minister Inia Seruiratu says this also includes the review of the Manual of Military Law. Seruiratu says the RFMF's role is to ensure the safety of every Fijian and the dynamic role requires a review of its current setup. He says the existing RFMF Act's processes and procedures belong to the colonial era, the British Army Act of 1955. On completion of the current reviews, the new persons and relevant some Supplementary legislations will enhance, greatly enhance the administrative and discipline processes within the RFMF. Up ahead, attempted baby abduction at CWM Hospital and Uni Fiji launches new program. My Radio Fiji 2 Deshki.
Welcome back. As economies continue to feel the impact of COVID-19, the oceans, its resources and the very people who depend on it should not be neglected. Fisheries Minister Semi Kuroi Lavisau says these are unprecedented times and we should remain vigilant. Kelly Vadala reports. In his message for the Blue Justice Initiative, which is hosted by Norway and UNDP, Semi Kuroi Lavisau says we cannot let our guards down. It is imperative to highlight that transnational organized crime in the global fishing industry has been lingering for some time. It undermines the work that our respective governments do in addressing illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. The minister says they will continue supporting the Copenhagen Declaration, which maps out a framework for global political cooperation. For countries such as Fiji, we are determined to work towards operationalizing the Blue Justice Initiative, which is aimed at promoting a sustainable and fair blue economy for all, free from fisheries crime. For those at the community level, such an initiative will protect them from transnational crime and events relating to climate change. We depend a lot on the ocean and it continues to be a priority resources for us here at the coastal areas. Even though we're an isolated island, keeping our waters safe from illegal activities is important to protect the young generation. Fiji is encouraging countries and states to join the group in supporting this important work. Kelly Vatala, FBC News. The Ministry of Health is investigating the attempted abduction of a newborn from the Colonial War Memorial Hospital in Suva. Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangai Nabete has confirmed to FBC News that the incident happened at the maternity ward last week. Dr. Wangai Nabete describes the circumstances around the case as sinister and wicked. Police are also investigating. So from what I know at the moment, which the investigations are still happening, there was a person who, uh, who uh, did not have a child and uh, or uh, wanted to abduct uh, you know, a baby. That's what I know as of uh, now. Right? The impact of COVID-19 has prompted the University of Fiji to offer public international and human rights law studies due to high demand. Launching the program today in conjunction with World Human Rights Day, the Fiji Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission Director Ashwin Raj says this will ensure people's rights are not exploited during the pandemic. Koroi Tandulala reports. The course will allow students to learn human rights law in the domestic context and help address inequalities in societies and structural violence. COVID-19 has done is actually amplified all of those things in terms of the prevalence of domestic violence, gender-based violence, um, you know, deep-seated xenophobic attitudes that we have. And suddenly we realized that it isn't just a health issue, that it is a human rights issue as well, because it affected, during lockdown, it affected people, um, people's movements, it re affected the right to education. Uh, universities, schools and other educational institutions had to suddenly start thinking about how they were going to offer education that the students had paid for. Professor Shoista Shamim says the course will also balance public health with human rights in times of crisis such as COVID-19. going to be advocates for human rights as well, those of them who choose to do that, and they need to speak up for themselves and for their communities as well to see how the state actually balances individual rights, especially the right to education, the right to movement, the right to expression, the right to religious practice, with the state's responsibility to look after the public health of everyone. The FHRADC director and course coordinator Shamim reiterated the need to explore how to address pressing human rights challenge, which is transboundary in nature. Korei Tandulala, FBC News. The UN 75 Community Days event in Nandi is all set to begin from tomorrow as a number of activities has been lined up for Fijians. With gates opening at Prince Charles Park from 9 a.m., the Fiji Meteorological Offices has also given assurance that the pending adverse weather does not pose any direct threat. Philip Nakaso reports. Hundreds of Fijians will flock to Prince Charles Park tomorrow for the UN 75 Community Days event a first of its kind for Nandi. Uh, exciting program lined up. We have uh, food from all around the world. It's like a global village, really. Um, we have uh, exhibition stalls uh, and interactive activities from 28 different countries. 
We've got uh, movies on big screen and then the uh, FBC concert on Saturday. Fijians can also expect good weather during the two days as organizers aim to generate a lot of activity for the people. At this stage, like I said earlier, there's no direct threats to Fiji for now. And uh, I think the event is good to go. Uh, the celebration is good to go uh, on Friday and Saturday. The UN team was also at Navodi village in Nadi today, continuing their meeting and advocacy ahead of the event. Uh, we have taken uh, great precautions uh, to make sure that this is a safe space, although we expect large numbers, hundreds, uh, we're sticking within the uh, uh, limits that have been prescribed by the Ministry of Health. This event has certainly uh, created uh, excitement and uh, enthusiasm to the communities uh, at large in the division. Following the opening tomorrow, the public can visit food stalls, cultural exhibition both from around the world and even play sports. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Fiji could look into the possibility of venturing into telehealth, says the U.S. Ambassador to Fiji, Joseph Sella. Speaking in Lambasa today, Sella says talks on this are in the early stages. Eleanor Turangi View has more. It may be new to Fiji, but the use of telehealth took the U.S. by storm since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, where healthcare providers deliver their services to their patients using commonly used apps like FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, Google Hangouts, Zoom or Skype. And during lockdowns, it's been a vehicle, a tool to um, uh, receive health care in the remotest of places. U.S. Ambassador to Fiji Joseph Seller says early discussions on implementing this in Fiji has commenced. We're in communication with Vodafone and the Ministry of Health and Dr. Krishnan and our Defense Department on how we can work to uh, provide equipment and work with remote cell phone signals. The U.S. Aid Senior Development Advisor Dr. Alex Wetter says Vanolebu has the digital capacity to do telehealth. Vodafone is interested in building conceptually uh, remote hubs where people can go and have a signal and confer with their doctor. The U.S. Ambassador is in the Northern Division this week to strengthen relations with the business community and CSOs in order to deliver assistance to the rural communities. Eleanor Turanga View, FBC News. And time now for business with Josiah. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up, low demand for Christmas cakes and new supermarket for Wuniika residents. Stay with us. Radio Fiji One, Nando Moivit. Leading a business tonight as we enter the festive season, bakeries are hopeful their business will bounce back as demand for Christmas cakes will increase. The businesses have been going through a low period because of the impact of COVID-19 but they remain hopeful that things will change soon. Venina Rakautonga has more. Business remains slow as many companies are cutting down on expenses. The demand is not really there because usually by this time we would have orders from uh, companies, big corporate companies like hundreds of uh, cake orders, but we're not getting that this year. I think the spending power is quite low. At the moment, uh, looking at the market side, uh, uh, and the previous years, if we compare, it has affected a lot. So probably just uh, having a cross finger that uh, uh, it, uh, it, it improves a lot. Having to change course to fit the slow market demand is now a priority. Um, introduced more uh, um, flavorish in our fruit cakes, which uh, has got a very good uh, response and uh, the quality we, uh, which uh, we are trying our best to improve every year. With uh, nutritious bread and uh, looking after everyone's uh, well-being, we have choices of bread, uh, whether it's gluten-free or high fiber, and we also have uh, 
cakes to celebrate uh, Christmas with. With only 15 days to Christmas, the bakers are anticipating sales to increase by next week. Venina Rakao Tonga, FPC News. We now join Sharon with the latest from the money market. Hello there. In the money market, riskier currencies including the Aussie, Kiwi dollars and the Chinese one were on the rise today. Positive vaccine news and prospects of more U.S. fiscal stimulus lifted risk appetite and weakened the U.S. dollar. Meanwhile, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey issued a warning of his own. He said that a no-deal Brexit would cause longer-term damage to the U.K.'s economy than even the COVID-19 pandemic, with the impact of the change potentially felt for decades. For tomorrow, perhaps the traders have a lot to look forward to, especially on the U.S. dollar and euro direction. Stats on inflation and jobless claims for the U.S. and interest rate decision by the ECB are due tomorrow. European Central Bank is widely expected to expand its stimulus measures to prop up the recession-hit currency bloc at its policy meeting later tonight. And that's all from your HFC Bank for now. Pinaka. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. It was a fairly positive day on the money markets. The Fiji dollar gained on the Chinese yuan, U.S. Green Bank, Kiwi dollar, PNG, Kina, Euro, and the Japanese yen. The only decline was against the Aussie dollar. Commodity prices were mixed. Oil rose a few cents to remain just above $45 a barrel. Gold dropped to $1,840 per ounce, and silver closed down at $24 to $02 per ounce. And in growing Fiji, residents of Wunika outside Lombasa are anticipating the construction of a one-stop supermarket in their vicinity. Belonging to two former Fiji residents, the supermarket will be built within two months using prefabricated materials from overseas. Eleanor Torangaviu has more. It will be the answer to their prayers. Residents of Wunika outside Lambasa town will soon not have to travel far to do their shopping. Yeah, it's uh, near to us. Uh, in Wunika people, uh, they can come and buy. They don't have to hire the taxi or uh, use the vehicle, anything. They can walk down, can come here and buy the thing and go. The supermarket is part of a plan to construct a satellite town which will consist of holiday villas, a service station and a rental car company. Construction of the supermarket will commence first and is expected to be completed and launched by April of 2021. The project itself uh, will change the demography of this uh, uh, community, of this area in uh, Winika. To Lambasara to Chon and Gomate broke ground for the construction works this morning. The materials for the prefabricated supermarket have just arrived from India, China and Australia. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. And that's all from Business Tonight. Jamie is up next with sports. Nakayan, good evening and sports tonight. Some flying Fijians uh, fail COVID-19 tests again. And Pearl's duo anticipate tough competition for World Cup spot. Details after the break. Kumar Sani Naika, Bumbo Alibu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2 me. Some local players and coaching staff who were part of the Flying Fijians Autumn Nations Cup campaign are still in Europe after failing COVID-19 tests. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor says these players and management were tested 72 hours prior to departure and will need to spend another week in Europe. The concerned players have undergone another test and O'Connor assures that they have a contingency plan should the results not come in their favour. Meanwhile, uh, players who pass the test are on their way home. Based on the, on the test results, uh, those who are negative will uh, fly, uh, fly home. Uh, we have plans for those who, who might test uh, positive. Uh, and if there's a few positive players, then we will uh, uh, you know, uh, implement uh, our uh, 
deputies for those uh, who will stay behind me. The Bristol Bears will make a formal complaint to World Rugby over Fiji's injury management of star player Semi Ranranra. The flying Fijian sent a set to miss uh, Bristol's opening two Heineken Champions Cup games against Clermont and uh, Connacht after suffering a leg injury during the Autumn Nations Cup victory over Georgia last Saturday. Bristol Rugby Director Pat Lamb <clears throat> told Rugby Pass the situation could have been avoided if Fiji had not kept him on for the entire 80 minutes. Lamb says Fiji had control of the game against Georgia and Ranrandra could have been taken off the field after the big collision in the first half. After an, an examination and scan by Bristol medical staff, they suspect Ranrandra will be out for at least three weeks. 24 teams will tough it out in the FBC Sports Men's Competition at the 11th Combat Ulrinakao Sevens Tournament. Since its inception in 2009, the tournament has produced some promising talent and organizers believe there's still much more to come. Tali Matera reports. With top teams confirmed for the two-day tournament, fans can expect some sevens flair at No Sorry's Ratudakbo Park. Uh, we are very blessed that we have uh, uh, top teams and uh, especially we have uh, the Fiji Barbers White and Fiji Barbers Blue participating in this year's tournament, which has uh, added uh, flavors to the tournament. The new format will encourage teams to compete at the highest level to secure a spot in the quarterfinals. The top teams from the six pool will uh, qualify to the main, uh, main quarterfinal, the top teams. And the uh, best two from the six pools will uh, join the six teams to make up the quarterfinals, the main cup quarterfinals. President Epi Colini Vala says the tournament has come a long way since its inauguration 11 years ago. Uh, most of the seven competition has been running, so we keep our fingers crossed that uh, we can come up with this tournament this year. We're supposed to have it in Nandi, so we shifted it to no sorry because of for the COVID-19 uh, 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 issue this year. The 11th Combat Uluinakao Sevens will kick off tomorrow at Ratudakbo Park in Osori. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. The decider on which of the two forces, police or army, will come out on top this year will be determined at tomorrow's 2020 Ratusukuna Bowl Challenge. Defending champions army will be fielding a much experienced team with the likes of uh, Isireli Lindua, Abisai Ndomulailai and Apisalome Vota. Army defeated police to claim the Ratuskuna Bowl last year with a 20-17 win. Former Flying Fijians fly half and Army manager Mijailia Rokowai Loa says the police will bring an equally strong lineup to match the Army defense. Specifically with this Kuna Bowl, they always come out with a good team. As you are aware that uh, the police have some good players from the provincial sides. Fair brother, Nandi, uh, fair brother champion. They have some Naitasiri, Suwa, and Nandranga players. So that's, uh, it is a very good side. They are the best uh, provincial side, and they have a good place. The Dhambati Sevens team will uh, mark their return to a major competition when they take the field tomorrow at the Ulrinakao Sevens. The club out of the suburbs of Nasinu has not appeared on the local seven scene for the past couple of years, but is now being revamped under the guidance of former Fijiana player Asinate Savu. Tali Materkula with the story. Training under the watchful eye of former Fijiana star, the team has set out its goal for the tournament. Our aim is to just, play our, just do basics and uh, be around the top four. Every team starts from somewhere, and for us going into this tournament, getting a win in our first game will be crucial. With players between the ages of 16 and 25, Sabu says she has bigger plans for them. Uh, my aim is to, to train them hard and to be the top of the, like, being in the national team. The Umbati will compete in the FBC Sports Men's category tomorrow at Ratudakbo Park in Osori. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. Police football goalkeeper Aquila Mate Suba is thankful to have ended the year on a winning note. While uh, reflecting on the 2020 season, the Lambasa player says it's great to retain the Sukuna Bowl football title. Mate Suba and his Lambasa side lost to Suba in the final of the Fiji Fact last weekend. 
the national goalkeeper looks forward to the new season. I think um, it's always a better thing to finish on a high note uh, during a season of uh, football and I believe uh, that's what uh, the dream of every place. And um, we couldn't have done this without the hardworking officials and all the sponsors out there who are support, uh, supporting us. Two police and netballers are in contention for a spot in the 2023 Fiji Pearls World Cup team. Lydia Panapasa and Alisi Ngalo have worked hard to get recognition since impressing selectors in the reset championship held last month. Now the duo will continue to do so as they prepare to march into camp with Pearls training squad later this month. Caroline Tavi has more. Competing against two of the best goal shooters in the country, Afa and Mariana Rusivakula will be tough for Lydia Panapasa. Uh, really great competition, uh, especially for the spot that I'm going after. Um, being a goal shooter is not uh, easy, uh, especially when you have to go against the uh, uh, experienced reps like uh, Mariana and Afa Rusivakula. Depending on her fitness, Panapasa is open to venturing into other positions in the squad. Uh, that will depend on my <laughs> fitness level. Uh, if uh, I actually train hard and uh, get fitter than I am right now, maybe I'll look into other positions. Despite getting offers from overseas clubs, the 20-year-old says her loyalty remains with the Fiji Pearls. There's been other interested clubs, uh, they've been uh, messaging me, but uh, right now I'm staying foot. For 24-year-old Ali Singalo, who is vying for the mid-court position, the key is working hard and having a positive mindset. I need to, to get a position at, at the mid-court uh, field is... Uh, to train hard and um, work on my fitness. Anapasa and Ngalo were part of the police netball team that took part in the 2020 scornable competition at the netball center today. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. In our play of the day, young Fiji 7 squad member Taniela Sanrungu has gone viral on social media for something he did at the Fiji Beta Wairiki Sevens in Taviuni last weekend. Sandrungu featured for FDS Barbarians against the uh, Police Blue in the final where he uh, flattened former Fiji Sevens captain Kalyone Nasoko following a strong carry. FBC Sports uh, posted the video on its Facebook page yesterday, which has since garnered over 96,000 views and over 600 shares. Here it is. Jerry Tuai finds the gap, uh, swings away from one, uh, scoots away from the other. Sandrungu. Will come right in to Nasoko, and Nasoko goes down heavily onto the ground. Jerry. And Jerry still has the ball. What will he do? A flick right in. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. YouTube uh, cracks down in U.S. election misinformation. This and more coming up. By today, Radio Fiji Radio Fiji Radio Fiji Welcome back. YouTube is to come down hard on fake news. The company is to remove new videos that falsely claim fraud changed the U.S. election outcome. And let's catch up with Kritika now who has tonight's weather. It was a gloomy day as there were showers with isolated thunderstorms in many places. Meanwhile, Tropical Disturbance 01F was located about 490 kilometers northeast of Undu Point at about midday. TD01F is currently moving west-southwest towards Rotuma at 10 kilometers per hour. In the west, fine conditions prevailed in the morning, but it later turned cloudy and humid. Eastwards from Pakhaba to Suva, breezy and mostly cloudy conditions. Soaking showers were experienced late in the afternoon. And up north, mostly cloudy and humid. 
At sea, fresh to strong easterly winds with average speed up to 45 km per hour. Moderate to fresh easterly winds elsewhere, rough seas. For the tides, the next low tide is at 9.53 p.m. followed by high tide at 3.57 tomorrow morning. Sunrise at 5.24 a.m. For tomorrow, occasional showers and isolated thunderstorms over Yasawa, Vanwale, Butavuni and nearby smaller islands, the eastern parts of interior parts of Vitilevu, which includes areas from Rakiraki through Nosori and Navwa. Elsewhere, cloudy periods with isolated brief showers and possible afternoon or evening thunderstorms. Isolated heavy falls likely. As for the temperatures, it will remain in their low 30s. And looking further, there will be a mixture of sun and clouds. Expect occasional heavy showers at times with isolated thunderstorms. That's the weather for now. It's back to Edwin. Thank you, Kritika. And in Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask, what alternative will you use once the styrofoam containers are banned? I'll bring my own container from home to use it in the restaurant. I think banning the styrofoam containers is not a good idea because it's one of the safe ways to pack our food. I prefer to buy the containers that is sold at the shops and reuse them again. Recapping the main story, Sodelpa president expresses di disappointment over appointment, Bulanauda cops flag from the government and state assets are secure, says Attorney General. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister station Gold FM and to our poll question. This week we are asking, do you think Siti Veni Rambuka will form a new party for the next general election? Visit our FBC website to answer. And on to our shot of the day. It comes all the way from Rotuma. This picture was captured at Marhaa village by Riten Gosai. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fpcnews at fpc.farm.fj or share it with us via our various social media pages, including Facebook and Twitter. And that was your news for this evening. Until tomorrow, Mademanda. सामने नाइक है बम वाली बुल लटो का रेडियो फीजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन